In today's video, we will be looking at how to light interior scenes inside Dow Studio. This tutorial will cover lighting interior scenes with windows and interior scenes without any windows. Hi, I'm Palmy. Welcome back to my channel where I help you to master Dow Studio. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on any cool videos that are going to help you on your journey. Having said that, let's get back to the tutorial right now. Welcome to this tutorial regarding indoor lighting. Now the first part of this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at a prop or a room or a building that has a window, and we're gonna discuss how you can get lighting into a room like that. So just like in real life, we have rooms that have windows and the light will seep through into that room because of the window. And that is absolutely awesome, and that's exactly what we're gonna do in the first part of the tutorial. So if you are struggling with lighting like that, with a room, with a window, with a prop that you have that has a window and you wanna get lighting in, I wanna give you a few tips how to do that as well. In the second part of the tutorial, we're gonna be looking at how we can light a room that has no windows. So we have got no windows, we have no natural light coming through. How do we light this effectively? How do we create a dramatic mood? How do we light this actual prop? So that's what we're gonna be focusing on in the second part of the tutorial. So make sure you stay to the end of the video for that as well. So one thing I wanna mention before we begin is a lot of the props or the rooms, the new stuff you buy inside the DAS 3D store all come with preset configurations now for beginners. So there's literally like a button you press, you double click, and then it will give you like this wonderful lighting, indoor lighting, and it looks absolutely awesome. Just like it does look in the actual uh, render that you see, the actual promo images that you see in the DAS 3D store. That's great for beginners. I have no problem with that. The only issue is, is when you have that scene and you wanna change the way it looks, uh, you don't have the uh, required knowledge on how to get that lighting in or how you want to change the scene to your advantage. So that's exactly what we learned today. So what I've done is I've picked the worst, absolute worst prop I've found in my library, which is really bad. So what you see here is a black screen and literally we have no lighting. So there's absolutely nothing in this room. If I turn around, you'll probably get to see the window here. This is what I'm working with. So this is all I'm working with. I've got like some uh, boarded up windows here with some uh, wooden panels here. Uh, and that's what we got. So if I come out of that IRA uh, render preview, you'll see what it actually looks like. This is what I've got to work with. So I'm gonna take the absolute worst kind of uh, prop and we're gonna light it up. So there's absolutely no lighting in this room whatsoever, which is awesome. So I wanna show you how we can create really cool lighting and how we can um, you know, start to bring lighting into this scene here where there's absolutely nothing. So first thing I wanna start off is, these are the render settings I'm using right now, like as the preview. So as I'm doing the, the Nvidia preview, these are the actual render settings. So as you can see, there's absolutely no lighting. I'm just gonna wait for it to kick in. There we go. Uh, we've got very little lighting on the floor here, which is coming in from the HDRI map here. And that's what we're gonna start off with first. So number one, we can actually get the HDRI to power through, for example, come uh, power through the window. The lighting will come through the window. So the way we can do that is, I'm just gonna just turn this around so we can see. So at the moment we can't see anything because the draw dome is off. Let me just turn that on so we can see the actual dome. This is the default dome, by the way, uh, the default one that comes with the uh, uh, Dash Studio. I'm not gonna change it because I'm gonna show you what we can actually do. So the first thing we can do is turn up the environment map. Now you're gonna have to boost this value up pretty high, something like 15 or 20. So I'm gonna give you like a starting value of say like 20. All right, now what happens is because we boosted that up, that light will seep through the window and it will start hitting our scene here. As you can see now, it's starting to hit our scene here and we're getting some uh, really good lighting here. So we're getting some light now into our room. Uh, it's looking a bit more, we can start to see a bit more of the room, the light's bouncing everywhere and we can start to see uh, um, the actual uh, couch here and then we can see other things around here as well. This room is quite small, so I'm trying not to get out, um, get out of the room. Um, it's very easy to get out of the room here. So I'm just orbiting here around, so there we go. Okay, so now we've got the HDRI, we've boosted up to 20, that's cool. And we've got some light coming through, that's awesome. Um, what can we, what else can we do? So we can rotate the dome to kind of um, choose where the light comes in, what angle it comes in. So here, the dome rotation. Uh, what I like to do is go in 45 degree angles, so 45 degrees and see where that takes me. And let's see where it has it taken, that's taken it over here now. So it's moved it over here. Now the only issue I don't like about using HDRIs is like you don't have full control. Um, that's the only issue with using HDRIs. You're kind of guessing uh, where the kind of the light is seeping through. So I can I can click on here and see where it's seeping through, and then I've got to wait for it to kind of uh, redo the drawing of the IRA preview, 
and see where that's going. So you can see it's the more I'm going, the more rotation, the more it's kind of seeping away. I don't really want that. So we want to do, there we go. We want to do, we know we have to do less than a 45 degree angle uh, for dome rotation for, to see over on this side here. So we know the light is coming through this angle here. Uh, let me get my tool if I can, just give me a second. I think it's F11. So the light seeping through here is coming in this direction. Oops, there we go. So the light seeping through here and it's hitting this over here. Cool. Excellent. So what else we can do is we can use the dome orientation X to kind of rotate it up and down. So uh, again, start off with like a 45 degree angle. Let's see where that takes us. So you can see now it's moving up now a bit more by using a dome orientation X. We're kind of controlling where even we're controlling the light coming through. So our light's coming through here. And now we're controlling where exactly it hits on this side here. So it's uh, higher up now. As you can see, it's higher up here. We get, we're seeing more there. So that's one way to do it. So if you just wanted, if you didn't want anything to do with the outside here, if you didn't, weren't worried about um, seeing anything outside of the window, for example, you could use that to uh, use HDRI maps really easy to obviously control um, where you want the light coming in. Now, obviously it depends on the HDRI map. So if I chose another one, so if I go to my library, browse, uh, go to my library, go to HDRIs, and the one I liked was, I think it's one of the free ones here. So I think it was uh, 42nd Street, I think it was. Let me just double check that one. Turn around, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so you can see now, obviously the lighting is changing now depending on what the HDRI looks like. So it, that's the only issue with HDRIs, is you're kind of stuck with what the default lighting is in with the HDRI map there. And as you can see, we're not getting much light coming through now because the dome rotation probably needs to be changed again. So as you can see, you're gonna to have to play around with these settings uh, to get the light coming through. So you're kind of guessing where the lights, how the light's coming through. That's the only thing I don't like about HDRIs is you're kind of guessing. Uh, but generally, if you wanted, if you had like a proper light source, so let me choose another one very quickly. Uh, go to HDRIs. Uh, I think this one here has a light source. There is, has the sun, so we can see the sun there. So if I start moving it around, you should start seeing the sun coming through here somewhere. There we go, okay. There we go, there's the sun coming through there. So you can see the sun coming through there. So it really depends on what the HDRI looks like. And then obviously we could use a dome orientation to kind of move the higher or lower, so 45 degrees. And I think it's moved far too high here. Let's have a look. There you go. So as you can see, it's it's a guessing game and I don't like that because we're kind of wasting time about guessing where this light's moving. So here you go, 20 degrees for dome rotation, now it's here. So there we go, that's that's how we can use um, HDRIs and we get this really cool lighting and that looks really cool. Okay, so number two, moving on to number two, another way you can light um, through the window, um, indoor, indoor lighting, is using a spotlight acting like the sun. So this is one a lot of people use, um, this technique, is we're gonna use a spotlight that's gonna actually be our sun. So what I'm gonna do is um, just turn off the dome, I don't want no dome. And when we turn off the dome here in the environment map, this section now becomes like the sun sky. So this sun sky mode here, this this becomes the sun sky mode. So in the, when you choose dome and seed and you get rid of the environment map, you are kind of going to the sun sky mode. So that's what it goes. That's the that's the default it goes towards. So let's set these values back to normal. As you can see, it's kind of sun sky mode because we've got the latitude, the longitude, the time of day, uh, and all that kind of cool stuff you can do with the sun sky. So let's get out of here. So let's create our spotlight. So create new spotlight. Um, active transport of the camera, thank you. And then we're gonna go here and choose spotlight. I'm gonna zoom out. So let's place our camera, uh, sorry, our spotlight. So what we wanna do with the spotlight is, generally obviously light comes from above with the sun, so kind of comes at an angle like this. Uh, but although we can have the uh, light coming like this, it's up to you how you want the light coming in. Generally, it will come from the top like an angle. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be straight on and it wouldn't be coming from the bottom. Unless you're doing some sort of horror scene, then that's up to you. Um, so I'm gonna have it coming at an angle and I'm gonna have it coming from this angle here. Whoops, this angle. 
That's kind of cool. So let's go back to our camera. Let's do the IRA preview. Now we won't see anything because the light values are very low. So just give me a second to reposition the camera here. And then let's go to, with the spotlight selected in the scene tab, I'm gonna to go to the parameters and light here. And let's uh, change some of these settings. So light geometry, obviously the shape of the sun looks like a disc. So we're gonna choose disc. So we're gonna choose disc. And now we need to boost up the lumens flux pretty high. So the lumens flux here, we're gonna add a couple of zeros, might even add some more zeros. Let's try two zeros. I don't think that's gonna be enough. So you can see it very, very, a little bit there coming. So it probably needs a couple more zeros. Let's try one more. That's not enough. Let's try another one. There we go. Okay, and the reason why we need more power is because if you have a look at the spotlight, it's very far away. So the more further away it is, the more power I need to give it. So let's go back to our camera. So now you can see some really cool uh, lighting effects here. Uh, one thing you can do as well, because we've got the spotlight now, we've got more control over how the light kind of seeps into our room. So we've got um, the height and the width here. We can make the, the shadows softer. So at the moment, these shadows are very sharp. Uh, when I'm gonna when I'm gonna increase this now to about 30, you'll see that the shadows get very soft. There you go. Shadows are way softer as you can see. See how like they've gone blurry? That's what we mean by softer. So if I increase this up even more, so say if I did like 50, you'll see they're gonna become very, very blurry. So, so you can see look very, very blurry shadows. That means it's very soft lighting, okay? So if you wanted soft lighting in your scene, you could have that as well. Um, these are the tips and tricks that actually a uh, movie uh, movie uh, studios use they kind of use this like lighting coming through the window you've seen it in you've seen it in movies before where you have this like lighting coming through the window and it looks really cool so okay so we've got this um what also we can do is uh, obviously change the color here so sun the color of the sun is not white it's more like a yellowy color so you want kind of like a yellowy type of color something like this and there we see a bit more of a yellowy tone to that color there uh, that might be a bit too strong, so I might bring that down a bit actually. It needs to be very faint, kind of yellowy kind of color. And that looks cool as well. So now you're probably thinking, all right, how can I uh, control this? So we can go back to the spotlight here and we can start translating it up and down. So as I start translating it up, the higher number, so let's say something like 800, let's see what happens to the light. So the higher I go, you can see that the light's starting to go down now. And I want it to go up, so I need um, lesser values. So let's try something like 600. And you should see that the light's starting to go up now. So a lot more easy to control. We can get the light to go higher up, 500. Very easy to control the light with the spotlight. I can also obviously go back to my spotlight here and, and just rotate it down like this and say, hey, I want it like this. Bring it up a bit. And then you can start controlling. It's so much more easy to control than with a dome. Uh, with the actual HDRI. So let's go back to the camera here and leave that there. Okay, so that looks kind of cool. Um, we've got some lovely lighting coming through. Um, I like this kind of lighting. I like the drama it's giving, the action and everything. That looks really nice. However, we can't see anything else in the room. So we're kind of like, well, we've got all these dark patches here and I don't really want that. I want to fill that light in. So how do I fill the light for this roof here? So number three would be to use an emissive. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So an emissive for our um, our ceiling here, we're gonna create an emissive that's gonna create the light that's gonna fill, that's gonna fill all these here. It's gonna fill all these, this darkness here and give us some really good lighting. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let me just get out of that mode and let's create a, so what we're gonna use, we're gonna use a primitive. So create, New primitive um, and make sure that the settings are like this. So Y positive, um, we're gonna use one meter. We're gonna obviously re rescale it anyway to fit the ceiling. Um, so we're gonna rescale it anyway. And divisions all need to be one. So we're not gonna be doing any kind of, um, any kind of geometry, um, any kind of geometry editing to it. We're just gonna use it as is. So accept. So here's my plane in my scene tab now. I'm just gonna translate it up so you can see it. There it is. Okay, and what I want to do is take that all the way up. So let's get that all the way up. Translate it on. It doesn't have to be exactly right at the top, it just needs to be there. 
Cool, and now I wanna just scale it. So use a scale button. It doesn't need to be perfect, the scaling, uh, because it's such a small room, it doesn't really matter. What I'm gonna do is, you see these edges here? I don't know if you can see these edges. I'm just gonna follow those edges till it gets to the end of the room. So something like that's fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. Cool, now we need to make it emissive. So with our plane selected in our scene tab, we go to the surfaces here. We click on our plane here in the editor, the plane. We go to presets, uh, open up the shaders, open up eye ray, find emissives, and we can double click that. Now that's made emissive, awesome. So let's uh, do our eye ray preview. Let's see what's happening. Probably not much because we need to increase the values. So I think one thing I need to do as well is turn it around. So I need to rotate it. So back to parameters and let's turn that around 180 degrees. There we go. Okay, excellent. So now you can see a bit of actual, um, you can actually see some filling of the light here. So if I just come down here so you can actually see it, you can see some filling of the light. So let's go back to our plane, our surfaces, editor and emissives. Um, I'm gonna turn that to candle, uh, thousand candle per squared. You're gonna see it's really bright, like overpowering. We're just gonna uh, reduce that value here. So something like, let's try something like 10, uh, probably a bit more. Let's try something like 20. So you can see now we're starting to fill in that area here. We're trying to fill in the lighting, but we still got the sunlight coming through, which is really cool. Um, and what you want is actually in your scene, in this scene, if I wanted this scene, I'm gonna have some characters here. I want one light to be like the hero or the kind of the hero of the actual image. I don't want, I don't want lights that are basically the same power. There's got to be one overall light which is the strongest, and the rest act as like um, they act like supporting roles in the scene. So with this case, is I don't actually want the this. Um, I don't actually want this filler light to be um, too powerful. So I'm gonna leave it at twenty. One thing I want to do as well is the emission temperature. Now, what you can do here is generally the emission temperature, we, we would leave that, uh, we would choose that as a value. So obviously the lower values, the more kind of red the color is of the light and the higher values, the more blue and white the light becomes, uh, sorry, the, the more the light becomes blue. What we can do to have even more control of our light is turn that to zero and say, hey, I don't want you to choose the emission temperature. I want to choose the color. So, hey, emission color. I want to choose the emission color. So, indoor lighting is not generally white. It's more like yellow again. So, we want some sort of a yellow. Uh, obviously, it depends what kind of scene you're doing. If you're doing like a club lighting or some sort of um, uh, futuristic lighting. I forgot what it's called now. Top of my head. No, it's gone. Um, if you want to do uh, lighting, any kind of lighting you want, obviously choose the respective color. So, in this case, I'm going to do yellow. And there, so now what I need to do is I need to actually boost this up a bit more. Uh, 25 maybe, maybe even 30. Okay, cool, now we're filling in the blanks. Okay, so what you're gonna tell me now is, Palmy, hey, there's a problem. I can see this, I can see this. So if I had my camera coming up like that, and I was at the bottom and I could see that, I can see that emissive light. So how do I get rid of that emissive light? We just turn it into a ghost light. So all we need to do is go down where it says cut out opacity and we put in this wonderful value of 0 0.001. And there it's gone, it's disappeared. Now it has disappeared. So what we need to do to counteract that ghost light is we need to boost up the power more. So the luminance setting is gonna have to be higher. So it might need to be something like 50. Nope, it's gonna have to be higher than that. Let's try 100. Okay. I might even go higher than that, let's try 200. There we go. Okay, so now we can see. So when you make something a ghost light, when the cutter opacity is 0 0.001, um, you need to boost up the illuminance. So that's why we use the candela per square, the K, because if I didn't do that, if I use this value here, I would have to put like loads of zeros at the end of this and it just, it's just really annoying. So that's why I use the candela per square, the uh, K, sorry. Uh, so this looks kind of cool. We've got some like filler light here. And if I look around the whole room, let's see how that looks. Now what happens is uh, because we've got the filler light, this kind of lighting that's coming through now is kind of um, being overpowered by the filler light. So you've got two options here. You can either reduce that filler light, that plane that we just created, or you can increase this one. So what I'm going to do is actually increase the spotlight. So I'm going to go to my parameters, my spotlight, my light. 
And what I'm going to do is uh, reduce the spread angle. So I'm going to reduce it to like 40. And you can see it's become more intense now. Probably even do less than that. 30. There you go. Very intense. Uh, intense lighting there. There you go. The lighting is more, way more intense. Now I don't like this filler light, so what I'm going to do is reduce that as well. Uh, let's put it to like 150 because I want that to be more prevalent. I want this sunlight to be more prevalent. I don't like that as well. Maybe 125. It's just me being picky. Now that's up to you how you want to do your scene. I like my scenes with a lot of contrast. I want the lightness uh, of the sun and I want the darkness here of the shadows. So that is how you can kind of do the lighting. Now you're probably thinking, Pami, um, actually I wanted uh, I wanted a scene here. I wanted my camera to be like this so I can see the outside. So I don't want to see the outside here. I mean, what is this all about? That's not going to look cool in my scene. I want my character to be next to the window with something here. Now what you can do is you can obviously use some Photoshop techniques to kind of paint that out and then paint your kind of background in. That's cool. I don't know, mostly we don't have Photoshop. So what we can do is we can use a HDRI to create our background and then we can use a spotlight to kind of give us that really cool light as well as with the emissive plane to give us the, the, the kind of filler light. So let's have a go at that right now. So I'm gonna go back to the environment map here. I'm gonna get the, um, the one that I practiced with, uh, which was the Manhattan Nights uh, HDRI 42nd Street. Cool. Okay, and what I'm going to do is our environment map doesn't need to be that bright anymore now because we've got our spotlight acting like the light, so to speak. So I can reduce that to like its generic value of one and it doesn't need to be that bright. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to leave that as 10 maybe. That's probably too bright. Um, all right, we'll leave it as two. Okay. So if we have a look out here, uh, if we just have a look at what I can see right now, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rotate it. I like the way this looks. We've got like purple light coming through here. So to give the illusion that this light is coming into our scene, we've got to change our spotlight color to that purple. So we've got to make it look like and act like the light is coming from here is going inside the scene. So we go to our spotlight in the parameters and we change that light into purple. So let me see if I can get this right. Some sort of purple. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it probably needs to be a bit more intense. So let's wrap up the intensity there. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Now, obviously, our missive probably needs to change as well. Our missive color needs to complement the kind of purple lighting here. So maybe that needs to be purple as well. So let's try that as well. Uh, surfaces and let's change that to some form of purple or some sort of pink or whatever it is there we go all right let's turn that around uh, maybe I would want to reduce that actually a bit more because I don't want it powerful there we go so here we go, I've got my scene now. I've got like this purple light coming through, uh, which would be coming from here and it's acting like that light is actually coming through. So that's one way you can do that to um, complement the light from the HDRI that's already there and kind of pushing it through um, and giving the kind of the, the illusion that that light's coming through uh, over here. So I like the way that looks. I would probably have my character I would probably have my character up against this and then I would have the light hitting because the light's coming through here, the light will hit my character here. That looks kind of cool as well. Or I'd probably have my character, let's have a look around the scene, uh, probably sitting on the sofa here, maybe something like that. And we have the, the light coming through here. So that's another way to kind of fake uh, what you're seeing out here with the HRI and bring that light through. You kind of, you got more control. Another thing you can do, you with the while we're here doing this scene is have a look around the scene and see what you can remove so for example here this scene here i can get more light coming into the this actual building this actual room by removing these boards maybe so i can go to my surface section tool I'm just going to untick this so i can select everything and i click on here 
And then when I go to um, the surfaces here, it's plywood. I can remove that. So I go to the cutout opacity and just remove that, send it to zero. And now we're getting more light into the room. So if I have a look now, you'll see that there's a lot of light coming to the room now because we removed those boards. So sometimes have a look around in the scene that you have and see what you can remove. Um, some people actually remove the ceiling. So you can actually say, hey, I'm not pointing the camera up in the ceiling here, but I want to get light in. I'm going to remove the ceiling. So I'm going to go here, uh, the ceiling, and just remove the ceiling here. And now you're going to get loads of light coming in from the ceiling. If you have a HDRI with lots of light. So that's one, that's another way you can do it. So just look for like, you know, something that's out of the ordinary just to create the lighting in that scene. There's nothing wrong with doing that because as long as your camera's not pointing up there and no one knows, it doesn't really matter. Your camera's pointing here and you're getting that extra light coming through. There's actually no issue with doing that. So just think outside the box uh, when it comes to lighting indoors like this with a window. So the next one we're going to look at now is we are going to be looking at a scene with absolutely um, no windows and we're going to kind of create our lighting with that. So I'm going to set up that scene right now. So here we are with our second example of an interior room or this is actually a hallway. Uh, as you can see, we have no windows. So the only lighting we have are those lights at the top there in the ceiling. So it's just basically four walls and we're stuck with that. So that makes it a bit more difficult when we don't have window lighting because we don't have as much uh, variables to play with in terms of lighting. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't still create some really cool effects. So this prop is actually from the DAS 3D store. And as you can see, this is the actual setup, the preset lighting setup. I haven't done anything here. This is exactly the way it comes and this is exactly the way it's loaded, uh, which is really cool for beginners because you can just kind of get on with it and stick your character in and create your scene. So that's awesome. However, when we get to a bit more intermediate advanced stage, we want to start playing around a bit more with the current uh, scenes that we have. We don't want to always go and buy new scenes because we don't have, we don't have unlimited amounts of money. Uh, so we've got to make the best use of what we've got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made that thumbnail that you clicked on this video and this is how I made it. So let's go through that process and show you how I did that. So the first thing is they've done the right thing here. They've actually created a, a primitive cube here and given it emissive properties and that's using, that's the main lighting source, which is the correct thing to do. So nothing wrong with that. Uh, so let's show you how I created that thumbnail. So I'm going to turn off these lights. So I'm gonna use my surface selection tool, click on here, uh, go to the surfaces and emission color, and I turn that to black. So and in a moment, you'll see the whole scene will go dark, apart from the lift lights here. Uh, yes, I live in the UK, so we call this a lift and not an elevator. So I'm gonna call it a lift. Uh, so apart from the lift lights here, that's the only thing that's emissive. So I'm going to come out of IRA mode, go into texture shaded. And so what I did was I looked around the scene. I thought, what can I make emissive that can be like a, a light that we can use? And I, I looked around the scene. I thought, well, these wall strips look kind of cool. So let's make them emissive. So that's what I did. So I made these wall strips emissive. So click on the first one, keep control pressed, click on the wall strip here and then click on the third one here as well. So as you can see here, we've got the walls trims here. Uh, they are all selected, one, two, three. So if I make a change to one, it will make a change to all three. So I don't need to individually click on that one, do the setting, that one, do the setting, and then do that one and do the setting. So I believe the color was in the, in the thumbnail was this purple color here. So let's choose that. And I believe the luminance was 35, which is what I set it to. So let's check the IRA preview for that see how that looks so when you're looking inside your scenes have a look and see what you can make emissive uh, now generally these lights here these these uh, wall trim lights um, wouldn't be the main part of your scene these these are here these lights would be your supporting role lights they would be like ambient lighting so they wouldn't be the main lighting in your scene they would be like the supporting role in a movie um, you're going to have another light, which is like the main light, which is like the hero light, which is the one everyone's going to look at because that's where you want everybody to uh, focus their attention on. So these are just like ambient effect lighting makes it look cool, but not, it's more like a uh, flash in the pan. Yeah, it looks cool, but it's not the main thing kind of thing. So that's our ambient lighting. I like that a lot. It looks really cool. We get some really cool uh, reflections from the, 
from the uh, the lift door here. But I was about to say elevator there. The lift door, and um, unfortunately, we won't be using a lift door, so we won't see these wonderful reflections. Never mind. Uh, okay, so the next thing I did was uh, I opened the lift doors and I put my character in there. So I put my comic book character in there. Um, very quickly, if you're not reading my comic book, you should do. It's a really cool comic book and it will keep you busy during this COVID-19. So go check out my comic book. Um, I'll put the link in the description for that down as well. So the link in the description to check out my comic book on Webtoons as well. It's on Webtoons. So go and check it out. Uh, that's a bit of promotion there. There you go. Uh, I'm going to open the door now. So let's open the door and open the promoting uh, and then open the door. All right. So there's my uh, character there. Cool. Um, let's go back to the NVIDIA array. So my character's already there. I already placed it there. I didn't want to waste any time. That's why she's already there. Just give the array preview a second to kick in. Very quickly. All right. So what I did here, I don't know if you can see her hand here very quickly, is uh, she's supposed to be holding something here. So uh, what I decided to do was we need some lighting in here. So what can I do? So I put like a uh, like a glow stick in here. You know those glow sticks you see in some movies when they're in a dark scene, they'll have like a glow stick. Uh, like two or three of them will will hit this glow stick and then magically it will light up the whole scene and it looks awesome. So we're gonna use a bit of a movie trick here. I call it a movie trick. Um, I'm sure some of you already done this before. Uh, what we do is I go, I go to a hand now. Let me just go find it first of all. Uh, and let me just turn it back on because it's just hidden. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. And we can see the actual uh, settings for this. So let's go to surfaces. So I, I chose, I on purpose I chose blue because it's a, um, it's a contrasting color. So we're, we're using a bit of color theory here. So we've got the purple, the pink, and we've got the blue, the cyan. So we've got the cyan basically and the magenta and this color theory. Uh, color theory is something I want to do later on in another tutorial, but I just thought I'll use this right now. Um, so we've got color theory going on here as well, which makes it more interesting. So I've got my uh, glow stick here. Now I want to light this whole area here. Now what most people do is they'll boost this up, like the value to, which is what I used to do as well as a beginner. I'll boost the value of this to ridiculous amounts. So something like, I don't know, 20,000, just crazy. Now, what happens in movies is you don't actually see uh, this happen. This thing here should not be really, really bright. It shouldn't be like overwhelming bright. That's far too bright, that is. Um, so what you need to do is you need to uh, leave that at 100, I think the setting was. You don't want it super bright. And what we do is we use ghost lights here to uh, create the illusion that this is illuminating the whole uh, room. Uh, it's what people in the movie industry use as well. And we we actually accept that. So when we see someone with one glow glow stick in the hand and it magically um, uh, illuminates the whole room, we're like, yeah, that makes sense. Our brain doesn't think too much of it because we're already, we are so encapsulated by the movie that we don't really take that in consideration. Our brain thinks, hey, the room's lit and cool. Let's carry, on, let's carry on watching the movie kind of thing. So the brain accepts it. Uh, so let's go down and uh, let's uh, show you those uh, ghost lights. So basically it's just a sphere. Um, and all we've done with the sphere is we have just put it here in three places. I put it in three places. Let me just show you this. So I've put one here. I've put another one here on the left and I've put one here at the front so we can see a face. So that's how we got one, two, three. Now uh, these two are instances here and that's the actual main one there. So the reason why I use instances is because they're going to use the same, uh, the same uh, illuminant settings for this one will be the same for this one and will be the same for this one. So that's why I use the sphere instance for that. So let's turn them on now. So let's turn on that one, which is this one here. Uh, oh, I've got to get out the writing mode first. There we go. Uh, so there's that one there. That's going to light it up there. Then I've got another one on the left here. There, and then I've got another one at the front so we can see her face. Okay. Now I probably could have turned, I probably could have, uh, Pick these two, I probably could have made separate ones and toned them down. So they should be like slightly less lighting here. It should be like a uh, slightly less lighting here. So I could have done that uh, to make it a bit more realistic if I really wanted to. Now the next thing I need to do is right. okay, so we've got the lighting. We believe that this uh, this uh, glow stick is illuminating this whole, uh, this whole um, lift here. I'm about to say elevator again. Uh, the whole lift here, the inside of the lift. Um, and then what else do I need to do to make it more believable? So this lighting here needs to spill into the um, lift here. 
which is spilling here already. As you can see, some of the lighting is spilling into there. So I made another sphere here, which is right at the bottom. And that's going to act as my spill light, which is going to fill a bit of this here and give us a bit of that, um, give us a bit of this purple color here, just to indicate that the light's spilling into there. So let's turn that on now. And you can see here, see these boxes, mounting boxes, you can see it's here. And you can see now, um, if I do this, I don't know if you can see here, uh, we've got the kind of uh, side lighting here of the blue. So we've got side lighting here, side lighting here, which is really cool. And then we've got the lighting underneath here, this here of this uh, purple, indicating that this is from here. This is coming from here. And then we've got the blue here, which is saying, hey, it's coming from here. Hey, it's coming from here. So that's what we're doing there. So that's how I created the scene. And as you can see, they're just basically all emissives. Um, emissives really are what you would use in a scene in, indoors. You, I could have used a point light, but the only issue with the point light is if I put a point light here, I can't make it, uh, I can't make the point light um, into a ghost light. You can't do that, it won't work. So that's the only issue with point light, point lights. And same with a spotlight, I can't make the spotlight into a ghost light because otherwise it won't, it won't show up whatsoever. So, um, although it would get more control with the spotlight, um, in this case, I didn't want to use it because I think the spotlight would have been too heavy handed in this situation. I don't think it would have worked as well. So I hope this tutorial is how to beginners and how to do indoor lighting inside the studio. Just covering the basics again very quickly. We've got a room with a window. So if you've got a room with a window, so much easier to get lighting inside that room. Just like I got a window right here, the light is going to come in and make it so much easier. And then if you've got a room with no windows, it's a bit more difficult, but now you understand how you can light that using ghost lights and using emissives to kind of bring that fake lighting in and make it look like the lighting was always there to begin with. Now, coming on to our comment of the week, uh, we have chosen this comment here. I'll put it up here somewhere. Jack Graham, thank you very much for your comment. Most appreciated. Thank you very much for that comment indeed. Uh, most appreciated. Now, don't forget to also, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe as well, hit that subscribe button as well. And also leave a comment down below as well. Anything else you'd like me to cover. Uh, having said that, don't forget to check out these videos here. I think it's these videos here. Don't forget to check out these videos here as well to uh, really enhance your lighting. So if you're a beginner, check out this one here, which is going to have all the lighting that I've got on this channel. That's going to help you create awesome, awesome renders as well. And having said that, I'll see you in next week's video.